whoa, 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 whoa. Ah, there we go. How are we doing, folks? Extended opening. And we made it through that entire song. Lovely little tune. A little spooky, a little bit fantasy-like. I thought it was a great way to start today's program. Since we are getting closer and closer to Halloween, someone would like to apologize for last week right here. Hello, Laura. Hello, Nancy. Uh, yes, so Elsa last week, uh, she was here, but she was hiding underneath. So you can't see it, but there's a table right here, and she was hiding the entire time. I don't know if she was... If she was uh, nervous, she was getting a little bit of stage fright, but she wouldn't come out to say hello. So she did want to come out and, to, and apologize to everybody today. Uh, she will be hopefully just roaming around. If she if she makes too much of a ruckus, we'll send her we'll send her inside to play. But she's in a sleepy mode right now, so hopefully. Uh, sh sh she'll be good and the lighting is bothering me as it always does if I stay like that it's okay though autofocus autofocus all right Lisa Lisa my new favorite t-shirt well I don't know it's a tough it's a tough call I haven't worn my Frankenberry t-shirt yet cookie cookie is in the house so, as you might be able to tell, we're doing things a little bit uh, Disney style today. I don't know. I thought we'd break out the Disney stuff. I have the t-shirt. We have Mickey and Minnie. As you can see right here, we have Jack and Sally uh, joining us. They are a part of the Disney family. We even have the mayor of Halloween Town joining us. And I'm thinking to myself, where is my cup of coffee? I knew I was missing something. And I'm getting coffee all over my laptop, my MacBook. So let's get me here so I can see me and read your comments as we go. How is everyone doing? Is everyone enjoying the autumn season now that we're so close to Halloween? Look at that, th that thumbnail is so funny. Um, Gotta lower the volume. But Santa is with us. Let's get rid of the Poland Springs. This is a non-sponsored video. You have the Sally doll. I love these dolls. Check out these dolls. I didn't want to bring attention to them too soon. But these were released in uh, really, uh, I think, mid-90s uh, by a Japanese company. Uh, uh, June Planning, I think that was, it was called. Uh, they released a lot of the characters, a lot of different wardrobes. Uh, some of them are very fragile, uh, including the both of these, uh, but they're really poseable. Look at that. I'm, I'm all about Jack Skellington, right? And this is his lamenting face, right? Look how how uh, poseable he is. But he comes in the Santa outfit. He even comes in his uh, pajama outfit. I thought it would be appropriate for a a Jolly, Jolly and, and Jack, Jolly, Sally and Jack to join us today. And I'm looking at the screen here, and the, the reception doesn't look the greatest. So I might have to switch to cell service. Let's give it a couple moments, though. See if it gets better on its own. The Ford family. Andrew and Matthew Ford... Big shout out to you, you boys. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for supporting. I hope uh, you are having a fantastic Halloween season. It's 95 degrees here in Anaheim. Well, that's funny. That's funny because if you notice a part of this headline uh, or a part of the title of this video, it says, Knott's Scary Farm. Now that's going to have to do all the way at the end of this video. So if you're interested to see what that's all about, you're going to have to hang in tight. Don't thumbs down the video because I'm not, I'm not at Knott's Berry Farm. But I promise I have something really cool to uh, show you 
uh, at the end of, of this video in, that involves very much Knott's Berry Farm. And if you don't know what Knott's Berry Farm, it's, 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 or, er, I'm saying not scary farm. There goes the poster. Uh, did I say not scary farm? Not, not berry farm becomes not scary farm in uh, the, the Halloween season. Let me pick up this poster. It's a perfect time to show you what this is, too. I've had this since I was a little kid. I've had this since I was a little kid. Back before Nightmare Before Christmas was, uh, you know, a, a big trending cult classic film. Back when it was regarded as like a piece of garbage that was not good for kids. Uh, this is an original, oh my God, it's so big. This is an original one sheet. What is original one sheet? Original one sheet means this was an original poster that was released. Uh, theatrically when the movie came out first printing ever but you see that there's some scribbling here <sighs> god it's so cumbersome let's see if we can adjust the camera oh there we go right there there's where it's happening you see what that says that says to shame that's rather a squiggle or from it could say love, I don't know, but it says to shame, love, or from Tim Burton. Oh yeah, oh yeah. You guys may have seen this hanging in my office. I thought I'd bring it out today and show you since I had Jack and Sally with me. Uh, you know, this is one of the, 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 the rare things that will always, no matter where I travel to, wherever I live in the country, will always come with me. Uh, because I was such, such, this movie was such an important part of my childhood and of course still is in a, a large important part of my life. But I thought I should share with you guys. Maybe boast and brag about it a little bit. Uh, I did get to uh, meet Tim Burton for a short, very short period of time. But I was very young so, uh, you know, whatever. I still got to meet him. Ba, 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 ba. All right. What else do we have here? Halloween. Let's, I didn't even have a sip of my coffee. Now, I don't know if Mark and Tanya are in the house. But I got the arc lighter. Let's get this candle going. Oh, yeah. Things are starting, guys. Things are starting soon. So, in the title, we have Yankee Candle Giveaway. So, before we start talking about Halloween, uh, I want to do a, a giveaway. I think it's about time. And I really was, I, I really, I was scouring through my, <laughs> I really could taste somebody with that. Um, I really was going through my collection, my personal collection of autumn, Halloween fragrances. I'm thinking, you know, what, what can I give away? And honestly... My heart was breaking. I was going to say, you know, maybe I should give this away. I'm like, oh, I can't do that. I can't do that. Um, but I will be doing a much, a much bigger giveaway really soon. But I thought we'd do kind of like a mini giveaway. And it's not a mini giveaway because, you know, uh, to get these across country, if someone wins internationally, that's great because these candles aren't available internationally. And not only that, it's a, it's a little bit of a challenge getting these across the seas. And what I mean by that is just shipping cost. So uh, if you are debating which candles you want to, Christmas candles you want to buy uh, for 2017 by Yankee Candle, we have uh, the preview set of four in tarts. We have Cascading Snowberry, Spicy Pepperberry, and Spruce. We have Aromatic Orange and Evergreen and uh, the, the, the balsam and clove. Everyone seems to just be going crazy over balsam and clove, myself included. Uh, but just because, you know, you may not enjoy the, the tarts, I'll send you the votives as well. So uh, all four of these pieces of wax in this bag, there will be a giveaway. I'm gonna repeat how to uh, how, how to participate in this giveaway several times throughout this live so 
anyone coming or leaving will know how to participate. Very simple, very simple. Instagram, if you have an Instagram account, you're halfway there, you're halfway there. All you have to do is go on Instagram and post a photo, a photo, not of me, not of the candle enthusiast, not of Yankee Candle, post a photo that you think really represents the Halloween season. And if you don't celebrate Halloween, uh, that's fine. Go with autumn, you know? Think of something that's uh, really, uh, you know, you know, whether it be your, your, your home decorations, inside, outside, whether it be, you know, your local farmer's market, something within the frame that encapsulates the Halloween feeling, the spirit of Halloween. Post that on Instagram uh, and just attach me. Tag me or, you know, uh, put my handle there in the label. This way I'll be notified that you're submitting and try to keep the submissions to like two or three. What I'll do is I'll pick out a bunch of my favorites and uh, I'll do a lottery style. I'll pick one from there and no matter where you are in the world, no matter where you are, I'll send you those those eight pieces of wax. Not a huge giveaway, not a huge giveaway, but you know, I think that's uh, I think that's pretty cool. I think that's pretty cool. I I would like to win those, uh, but I have the large jars. So, uh, all right, and the cookie martini, sugar cookie martini, folks. I don't have it here with me, but I think I, I let. I usually don't say which ones are my favorites, because that. That, that means nothing to you guys. If I say something's my favorite, that really doesn't mean anything to you folks, right? Because we, we all we all interpret candles differently. Someone say, hi, Anthony. Is Anthony here? And Anthony, Candle Cafe. Uh, uh, let's read what's, he melted aromatic orange and evergreen last night and it's super strong. That's what I've been hearing. I have not had a chance to uh, burn it. But that is really, thank you for sharing that. Thank you so much, Anthony. Um, yeah, you know, it's that was an intense candle to review, excuse me, not review, uh, to evaluate cold because there it is, the intensity is so strong. Uh, if you've watched my previous videos while I was inside, Sal Deerfield, Massachusetts, home of the Yankee Candle Village flagship store, they, uh, they, they allowed me that little like parade float they, they allowed me to sit there for about four to five hours to film all of the returning favorites, uh, the six uh, already released candles for uh, Christmas 2017. And man, I spent a long time with that aromatic orange because that was a tough one to, to pull apart. I can't wait to burn it. But th that sugar martini, that sugar cookie martini took me by surprise. I loved my reaction in that photo, I st or in, my, in that video. I laugh myself every time I see it, because in my mind, I thought I would have, I would have edited that out, but I, I kept it in because it was just it made myself laugh. Um, I was just so shocked. Um, it smells like a martini. It smells like a martini, and it smells delicious. Even if you don't like martini, that doesn't mean it smells like alcohol. No, I'm talking about the beautiful fragrant smells of gin and sweet vermouth. Forget about the alcohol. Uh, so whenever that becomes available, I don't know if that's uh, available on the website yet, but it wasn't when uh, I posted that video. Sweet seduction is str way stronger than I thought it would be. Yes, right? So it ends up we lose candy corn, but we get something that I think I think everyone's kind of happy with. And I'm I'm very happy with that because I was I was always kind of bummed out that people didn't enjoy candy corn and kind of put it down. And my favorite new one's cascading snowberry says Anthony. You know, now, Anthony, did you get a chance to get your hands on sugar cookie martini uh, and give it a sniff? Cascading Snowberry, I think, is uh, it's it's up there as far. I mean, I, I just don't do favorites. I don't do. I can't pick favorites. But as far as 
spices are concerned and things that might agitate the headaches, it's definitely um, it's it's high on my list because it's not abrasive at all. That cascading snowberry. Da, 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 da. All right, so while we're talking about that, I'm gonna start something new that I haven't done before, and I feel like I should've been doing this the whole time. At the end of the month, every, uh, at the end of the month, I'm uh, on the Smell It Sunday Lives, I'm going to just give a little quick shout out to the new Patreon members or patron patrons of the Candle Enthusiast Patreon account. Um, I do, uh, you know, reach out to you guys, uh, uh, one by one, but I want to make sure that, uh, you're getting a little bit more attention, and if you ever want to keep yourself completely anonymous, uh, just submit your name as, like, Ralph Cramden or something, uh, but I would like to welcome Trisha, uh, Christine, Christina, Lori Ann, and Eric, as of October 1st. Did I miss anybody? No, I didn't. Uh, all new patrons uh, as of uh, the month of October for the Candle Enthusiast page. Um, it's been a very, very big help funding this show. It's really painting a very pretty portrait of the future of this channel. Um, and with that said, there's only one spot left for the subscription box, the Candle Enthusiast Deluxe subscription box left now. So if you don't know what that is, patreon.com slash the Candle Enthusiast. It's always gonna be linked up in any one of my videos down in the description. Just check it out when you get a chance. All right, so let's, let's maybe move this right here racer head my brother and my sister-in-law went to the I guess there was a pop-up diner a Twin Peaks diner in Hollywood I guess it's there for a week or so since we're talking about David Lynch right I did not see the new cookie swaps well I mean I, I've seen them I haven't smelled them I know what they I know what they are, uh, but I really did. I I I I had to promise, and I always keep my promises. I had to promise Yankee Candle I would not share what those what those two are. Uh, as soon as I see them on the internet somewhere, somebody else talking about them, then I feel like it's fair enough to to talk all about them but i have a lot to say about them because one has got the longest name of any yankee candle i've ever seen in my life it's like literally like five nouns in a row so um huge david lynch fan so what's your favorite david lynch fan as i pull out some candles Do, do, do. We got candles today, people. We got candles today. What do you think we were doing? It's called a candle enthusiast. Got more candles in here. I don't know. We got sweet treats. We got goodies. I don't know why I'm breaking this all out. I had everything laid out perfectly, and now I'm making a mess. Let's start with these two. Am I gonna hand out candy on Halloween? You know, I usually do, but I got some things. Got some ideas in my head of what else I can do for this show on Halloween. You know, <laughs> this might make, it makes me laugh a little bit, uh, but also makes me a little bit sad. You know, I would love to go out and get like really beautiful shots of like the sunset, the horizon, those beautiful, you know, that beautiful orange sunset with the silhouette of like trick-or-treaters and the sounds of 
families and kids running around having a good time. But then I thought, wait a minute. What if, you know, and it would be bound to happen, somebody sees a guy with a camera walking around neighborhoods in the dark filming little children. You know, that's not going to go over well. And um, so I can't do that. But I would love that opportunity. You know, like, can we see them like, uh, you know, like the, you know, like, uh, if you saw like the Stranger Things season two uh, trailer, you know, like I love that kids on Halloween night, E.T. comes to mind, Halloween 3 comes to mind. And Cookie Hill says, can we do super chats? Yes, uh, Cookie, you could do super chats, but please don't feel obligated to do that. That's very nice of you. Uh, but there's other, there's other means, other means for you to, to uh, pledge money and get something in return. That is very nice of you, if, 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 if you would like to do that. Blue Velvet, all right. So you never know what these conversations are gonna turn into. So I uh, returned, I went to Sleepy Hollow the other day. I did a live in Sleepy Hollow the other day, and I apologize, I haven't even formatted that video yet. Uh, a lot of tumultuous things happened uh, with the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. Um, they close the gates earlier than they used to. Back in the day, it used to be 8. Then last year, they changed it to 5 p.m. Now, this year, it's 4 p.m. And to get that perfect lighting, that perfect sun lighting that's going to cast those long shadows, you need to wait for that sun to drop. And I was very upset and disappointed that, you know, I couldn't get in there um, past 4.30. And I'm not gonna be someone who's going to just like hop the gate. I play by the rules. But I did go to Sleepy Hollow yesterday. I filmed uh, my reviews on these two candles right here from Burke and Hair. Now, most of you guys, if you're on Instagram, you're probably more or less gonna be following them. Uh, they have a very big presence uh, on Instagram, Burke and Hair Company. Now these two candles are a part of their Halloween collection. One here uh, called Midnight, one called Hocus Pocus. Now I wanna give a big shout out to Erica from uh, Birkin Hair for sending not only these candles, but a bunch of others. I don't have them right here in front of me, but she sent me a lot of candles. So you will see this review very soon because I don't wanna post it after Halloween, but um, you're going to be seeing more reviews from this candle company because she sent me so, so many of them. Uh, and I really, really enjoyed reviewing these. Um, um, one in particular really, really, really got me excited. I said really a lot, but trust me when I say that. So make sure you, you watch out for that review. Uh, but in the meantime, make sure if you want or you're interested in these candles, that you go over, swing by. They haven't. They, they sell their candles uh, on Amazon. They have an Etsy shop. Etsy is probably the best way to go. They're very affordable. Uh, get them before they're gone. Again, because these are the Halloween collections. They're not carried all year round. Uh, but also follow them on Instagram. Tell them I said I sent you. Tell them I sent you because that that will let them know that this is working, that them sending me the candles was worth their time and effort and their investment. This way they'll do it again, so we have more candles to talk about. Uh, but I also filmed in Sleepy Hollow, that's not the right one, it's over here. I've talked about these over and over and over again, and Melissa from Scent Pop Candle Company, now you might remember Scent Pop Candle Company uh, from this review right here. This was the gray stuff. Ooh, I can't quite block the sun. This is uh, the gray stuff uh, during my uh, Beauty and the Beast episode. Whew. I haven't had a chance to burn this yet. This thing is, if you love, I don't want to compare this to anything Yankee Candle, but if you love like anything cake, red velvet cake, Happy birthday, cupcake. Volume turned up to the max. Scent Pop Candle Company, same thing. Instagram, Etsy, 
check them out. Follow them on Instagram. Tell them I sent you. Say hello. Share the love. But what I reviewed yesterday was a trio set. You've seen these. But one of the reasons why I brought out Jack and Sally and the poster today is because we have a collection called Sally's Potions. And we remember that sequence where she's making the, the, the soup for uh, Dr. Finkelstein. And uh, she uses the deadly nightshade, the frog's breath to cover up the deadly nightshade, and the worm's wart to uh, kind of smooth everything out. So I reviewed all three of these and I suggested pairings for all three treats, treats to pair with all three of those candles. Uh, also filmed that at the Sleepy Hollow Cemetery. That will be coming uh, very soon. In fact, that's what I'll be working on as soon as we part ways today. Do, do, do. Do, do. Let's take a look at these. Angie Clementine, haven't we? I, I, am I mistaken? But I haven't seen you in a while. Nice, nice to see you. You know, my friend from Houston uh, was just in, my very close friend from Houston was just in a couple days ago. We're still talking about David Lynch. Or you guys were. I'm trying to catch up on all of your, your remarks here. But definitely, like I said, again, I'm not making money on this. I'm not promoting that. They're not sending me money. And these candles, I'm not, this is not like a tricky way for me to get free candles by me promoting them and reviewing. No, that's not what this is about. This is me sharing my passion, sharing my love for small production candle companies. And I just want them to know that um, there's, uh, there's people out there like us who support them. Uh, Cecily, 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 am I pronouncing your right, name right? Cecily, I uh, saw so Eric Carlson get the gray stuff in Disneyland, his Disneyland vlog. Yeah, I, I actually used a little snippet of that vlog in my Beauty and the Beast video. And it, we always laugh about it because in the video, it looks like he, he really dislikes um, the gray stuff. The gray stuff was a, a treat that was released at Disneyland for a short period of time for the the, the live action Beauty and the Beast film, and as is really decadent, like cupcake. Um, he just doesn't eat sugar, so when he took a bite out of it, it looked like he was going through uh, torture. But it was only because he's just not used to eating sugar. He said it was delicious, though. Dr. Finkelstein, Dr. Finkelstein is a, is a kind of a jerk. Yeah, he's very much a jerk. Dr. Finkelstein, front of the line. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice. We gotta do a Beetlejuice video sometime. Where did you get Mickey and Minnie? I got these, don't make fun, don't make fun. Cause I know you're gonna make fun. I got them off eBay. But they were uh, 2016 uh, Disney Store <laughs> exclusives. So I think it's like the way the Disney Store works, you, you spend so much money, you spend an extra so much, and they give you a Mickey or a Minnie. And um, I was looking for a medium-sized Mickey and Minnie, and then I came across like these two see them right here and I'm like like and I'm like how could how could you say no I mean I'm sorry like I said make fun all you want some guys Sally's fallen some guys collect strange stuff every now and then every now and then I buy a plush animal you know what it belongs on the office walls gotta have Mickey and Minnie. It makes me happy. It makes me happy. Doll, I don't know if I'm a doll enthusiast. I call them plush. And these I got when I was young, but I still haven't managed to get rid of them. So I don't know what that says about me. So 
So Jackie Brown says, where did I get those little chairs? Great question. So uh, two live vlogs ago, I mentioned these chairs. How cool are these? Um, the place, I don't know if it's a franchise or what. And there's no, there's a barcode here, but there's no company name. The, the name of the store is Job Lots. It's like one of those overstock places. And I saw them, and as soon as I looked at this, do you know what I thought to myself? Now, you, the folks who watched the other day, you probably know where I'm going with this. Um, look at that. Come on. I mean, for display purposes, or if you actually want to light it, I don't see any danger. If you really do have a problem, just put something underneath it. Uh, what I did was I bought every one that they had, and I'm going to start posting them up on the, the Candle Enthusiast eBay page. And um, I, they are definitely not meant for candles, uh, and I don't want to get any lawsuits. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but I do recommend if you do light them that you just you know the you know there's a possibility if you have a cat or something that that could see how you know it could tip forward or something like that. But at least for display purposes, it's fine. Uh, and speaking of that, this is a one of a kind, not this candle, but the back. Look at that. Remember that video I did at the Yankee Candle Village? That's another little piece. Uh, that's going up on eBay and uh, including the rest of this trio set um, the the autumn twilight harvest bouquet now the autumn twilight has the the limited edition I'm so full of myself I try not to be but I gotta call it something right because they are limited limited edition Halloween 2017 uh, candle enthusiast label on the back and then did I not bring up I have it here there's a third called odd autumn rain that goes in this trio and it's got also the Halloween label on the back they will be going up on eBay so thanks for asking that question about the chairs because I actually actually was gonna forget to talk about that Yeah, th those candles were a bit of a mystery when I first saw them. Um, um, Wade, the president of uh, the Yankee Candle Village, he, uh, you know, I, I kind of had so you know, when I was there, I asked someone if he was there, I could, if I could talk to him, because he knows everything about all, I mean, not only is he the president of the Yankee Candle Village, he's like the biggest Yankee Candle geek ever, and I love it. Not just Yankee Candle, but aroma geek ever. And we, we couldn't figure out what those candles were. Now, they did start popping up in outlets, but only in the tumbler form. The, the ones that at, they're at the Yankee Candle Village are, um, are in the house warmer jars, right? Right. So I had to get them. You can find them in the tumblers, in the outlets. Uh, and what they are is... Uh, 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 say like this one right here, Autumn Twilight. It's crisp fall night. For crisp, crisp, crisp fall night. Cr crisp fall night, yeah. Or, or Autumn Nights, or Autumn Night. <sighs> so many names in, uh, if you're from the UK or Europe. Um, and Autumn Rain, I believe, is, is November Rain. So they're just repackages of other scents. Oh, look at this. So, first of all, Cecily, I'm going to read your comment here. Speaking of geeks, I told my cousin and his wife about the candle enthusiast and sent him a video, and he said, this guy is awesome. I said, I know, right? Well, that's very kind of you to say. It's actually, it's bizarre for me to hear that. I mean, first of all, so thank you, but... Um, uh, Cecily, I really have to reach out or do, uh, not re reach out and shout out because she has been watching my videos and don't think I'm not seeing your comments. I'm seeing each and every comment of your videos. Just these days with the very busy schedule, 
I'm not really answering the comments to the videos. I said I would warn you guys when that time came, would come, and it, it, it it's come. I can't keep up with the comments because I don't want to be like, oh, thank you, thank you, generic comments. I really want to engage with with you folks in the comments section below and um, and um, it's you know once things calm down maybe after the holidays I'm gonna go back all the way to September and answer all of the comments and every now and then I do answer some of the comments that are out there Elsa has grown look at this I've been giving her a thing called angel eye it's supposed to make her look, you know, see the the dark circles under her eyes, just like me. We both have dark circles under our eyes, um, but it's not working yet. And she just hit something, and my video went away. There it is. Um, she's being a good doggy today. You're being a good doggy. Um, but uh, so thank you, Cecily, for watching the video. Is giving life to some of my back catalog I highly recommend if you haven't take a look at some of my older videos especially this year since you know I had you know really really wanted to pump out so much Halloween goodness uh, as far as like attractions and and autumn we're gonna get to autumn's coming but Halloween you man it just with the with the candles with everything that's happening uh, in my you know own personal life we all have our own personal life that's not an excuse uh, just it, you know the, the the epicness the epic epic plans I had didn't fully come to fruition uh, you know so I was a little you know I was a little upset by that but there's there's next year there's the year after that uh, but we're things are things are good things are better than they ever have been and lots of great things to come and there's still Halloween stuff so even though we're close to Halloween there's still Halloween stuff to come you might be watching it after Halloween but there's Halloween stuff to come uh, Jackie thank you so much you may think that's just a you know a very you know just like a casual nice thing to say but that really means a lot to me because um, with everything everything else you know in you know that I deal with with my life and and scheduling everything and this being a one-man show it, it really is a seven day a week job I had one one day off because a friend was visiting me out of town and I was saying to myself I haven't had a day off like this since Christmas and I'm thinking to myself, well, that's that's not good. Something's got to change. I just want to make sure that you guys like have like tons of content, but I'm being too hard on myself because I want everything to be good. You know, I want I want you guys to watch a video and say, like next year, I want to watch that again, or you know maybe the next day be like, oh, I got to watch that again. Do I think I'll do a live on Halloween? I think I... Mm, let's just... Let's... Let's... Yeah. Yeah. Let's go with the yeah. That's not a promise. But let's go with the yeah. Alright. So, what do we have here? What's been the big topic of Halloween this year? Uh, that uh, is going to be, of course, Witch City Wicks. You know how much I love Witch City Wicks. And the reason why I didn't do a review of this candle is that it's, since, unless you go to the actual shop, it's been sold out. And uh, I didn't want to do a review if you couldn't get your hands on it. But this really is uh, a, a, a tremendously amazing candle. I hope Liz does bring it back. I thought this would be a fun one to kind of go over today. Um, you know, uh, you, you may have all heard the story about after Edgar Allan Poe was buried in Baltimore, there was a mysterious person who would leave a bottle of, I've heard bourbon sometimes, sometimes I've heard cognac, but leave a bottle of bourbon or cognac and a single rose. Uh, every night, or at least very frequently, by uh, his 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 grave, 
And this happened time and time and time again. And they never did. They never did find out who left. Uh, we're leaving these these little these little tokens for Edgar Allan Poe. So that was really the the inspiration for Liz, candle maker and owner of Witch City Wicks for this candle. But she also wanted this candle to smell as if you know you were sitting next to Edgar Allan Poe. And I totally get that. There's almost a texture. I can almost see and feel the texture of the clothing he's wearing based on this scent. I'm not kidding. It has this faint, almost completely faded, uh, masculine, musky cologne, sweetened up by that whiskey-based beverage, or cognac. But the depth and the layers of this candle is really what makes it shine. This is a limited edition. This is the second run. Um, if I had to, I would burn this instantly, but I only have one, so it's gonna be a very special occasion. To me, this is like a 2007 Napa Valley Cabernet. Uh, it's gonna be a very special night when I light this candle. It's gonna be some good company uh, in the house when I burn this one. So keep your eyes open, see, see if this becomes available. Uh, uh, Leslie Pethybridge, I don't know if she's with us today, but she, uh, receive this candle. I always uh, love to give her a shout out because um, she, I think her excitement, her enthusiasm of this candle kind of really sums, sums it all up. I could go on and talk about descriptors for days, but seeing her enthusiasm about the candle really says more than anything I could say verbally. Uh, ba, 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 ba. Okay, let's try to go back a little bit here. PBS is having a Poe documentary. Industrial Wasteland, first of all, huge thumbs up. Supporter, supporter, supporter of the candle enthusiast. One day, hopefully I get to like take you out to like a nice steak dinner if you eat meat. Uh, but you've uh, really... Uh, Thank you for all of your support. Uh, PBS is having uh, a documentary on the 30th. If it's a new one, I'm very excited about that. And Bath and, and Elizabeth says, Bath and Body Works, Happy Halloween, so good together. That, that, that must be in reference to something that's... Okay, Mark, Mark, Cognac, thank you. So Mark uh, is confirming that it was Cognac, which is what I thought. Can anybody tell me what cognac is distilled from? Trivia question. Don't Google, don't Google. If you don't know, you don't know. Um, uh, what's, your, what's my favorite post story? This is not from my literary critiquing. Cecily, I, that's not a great way to say it, but my personal favorite, one that I've read so much that I almost can read it, recite it without the pages in front of me, is The Telltale Heart. I just love the rhythm of that, 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 that short piece, you know, the, the, told in the first person, and how you could sit there and read it to yourself silently or out loud with so much drama. Like if you're like really worked up, you had like a, just a frustrating day at work, you could just read the telltale heart with so much gusto and just release all of that tension. Have you ever seen the animated movie version of the Telltale Heart? Is this the recent one that was produced by what's his name? Uh, the one, the one that's like uh, about a year and a half old. Is that the one you're talking about, Cecily? Angie likes that one. Oh, in the '60s. Animation in the '60s. I haven't. 
I'm almost certain that I haven't, but I will now. Mark, Mark's right. Yeah, so grapes. So it's actually, yeah, it's going to be made from uh, uh, wine, essentially. Grapes. Cognac, that is. Just like, you know, well, we won't get into beverages. It's very easy for me to get off track. Vincent Price. Yes, Vincent Price was a childhood hero of mine. Um, I can't even begin to say how much Vincent Price was such a such a hero to me. Somebody kindly asked uh, some time ago when I was going to talk about this fine candle company, Werther and Gray, uh, I believe, I want to say out of Pennsylvania, but I'm not sure. Um, uh, and, uh, but anyway, I, I, uh, I, I did want to do a full lineup review, again, excuse me, not review, evaluation, of uh, Werther and Gray's candle. I did obtain this one. It's called a Witch's Hunt. And if you take a look at that label, uh, it's out of focus, I know, right there. Uh, you could see why I kind of took a s step backwards. And I'm like, you know what? I don't know if I really want to... Because if I brought this to Salem... First of all, no witch was burned at the stake in, in Salem, right? Um, that would have been in, in Europe. And it's just, I, I don't know. It's it, it's a it's a bit dark. It's a bit dark for, for my liking. I love Werther and Grey candles, but uh, Witch Hunt with this label, I'm, I'm, I'm usually very, very objective when it comes to this kind of stuff, but I don't know. I don't know. Um, Werther and Grey, if you're listening, um, I, I, I don't, and I know you're not trying to be disrespectful, but I think that this is, this is a little bit too too dark for me um, because I think um, you know it's just it's too big of a tragedy it's too big of a tragedy but let's smell the candle and see what we get um, it's funny the top notes. Usually you're like bombarded with top notes. But right now, it's all about the heart, the bass notes. Is that sun becoming a problem? So a, a, a big, big cedar firewood. Let me fix this light. Give me one second, guys. A big, big cedar firewood component, that's for sure but not overly smoky, right? That's not helpful at all. That's probably gonna be better. Yeah, there we go. But it's not overly smoky. It's more resinous than smoky, like incense smoky. Um, to me, this does smell like the little wooden pellets that they put in the, the things in the churches when they add uh, the resins or the freight, whatever they do these days to, to burn incense in uh, uh, churches, including that amber. And it's very warm. <laughs> Witch hunt, burned at the stake. I don't you see what you see my problem with this warm in the sense of like almost like baking spices but I don't smell cinnamon I don't smell nutmeg I have a feeling there is some resins involved in this candle that I'm probably not familiar with uh, but if I had to paint a portrait which is really what's most important here 
this does really remind me this is like a portal uh, to the past this does smell old this smells like you're sticking your nose into a time machine and smelling you know the countryside the forest the woods a uh, little bit of smokiness a little bit well not a little bit of smokiness but smoke but that smokiness coming from uh, the incense of the church the old rickety buildings the forts the huts the firewood and and cedar this is a, this is one, so this is one I would spend a lot of time folks and I wish I did I wish I took a closer look at this one before this this kind of on the spot review but no question, it's a very pretty fragrance. Very heavy, very thick. Very thick candle, uh, dominated by bass uh, and heart, or excuse me, bass, yeah, bass and heart notes. Um, and I have a feeling if you burn this candle for a couple hours, it's gonna stick around. After you blow it out, it's gonna stick around for quite some time. You'll be smelling it the next day. Very mystical. There's a little bit of magic happening here. There's some magic, there's some magic brewing. You know, this is what you do. In my opinion, in my opinion, Werther and Gray, I wanna work with you, I want to review your candles. I love what you do, uh, and I love your, um, your company's mission, so to speak. Uh, but instead of seeing the, th uh, the three witches burned at the stake, maybe it'd be kind of interesting to, to see like the, the townspeople carrying torches, kind of like Frankenstein style, um, you know, after, you know, the witch hunt, they're looking for the witches, but seeing them being burned alive like that, I don't know, it's a bit dark, it's a bit dark. I like that candle though, I like that candle. What else is that though? Amber smoke, firewood, cedar. I mean, I guess that's it. There's definitely, there's not like a patchouli. There's no uh, frankincense myrrh, uh, but it's a, uh, oh, you know, I'll, I'll throw this one last one in there. And this one's definitely safe to say. Um, an expired, completely expired fire in your fireplace. Completely, meaning, you had a big fire raging roaring one evening in your fireplace or in your wood stove in your wood stove and that thing was ripping roaring on fire and then you it went out let's say uh, you went on vacation and then you come back home and there's that lingering smell of that night when it was roaring in the fireplace and then you open up that grill or that gate for the the wood stove or the stick your nose into the fireplace and you smell the expired fire the ashes that white residue not soot but that sweet ashy white materials i like that one i like that let's go with that i like that it's a it's it's clean it's clean it's clean and it's attractive it's bold it's heavy it's thick I actually picked this up in Burbank. Uh, shout out to the Bearded Lady uh, Museum of the Mystics, right on Magnolia Boulevard, across from Halloween Town. Magnolia Boulevard, man, so much Halloween stuff to do. Uh, so much Halloween goodness. You got Halloween Town, and then across the street, you got like Halloween museums and stores, the comic book shops that focus on the haunted stuff. And then you have the museum, uh, the Beard Lady Museum of the Mystics that have just good old fashioned fun, uh, stuff like that. Candles, teas. Um, I did a tea, um, but I got a tea there made by one of the women who runs the museum. Uh, spe speak, yeah, like a speakeasy, but it was called Speak Teasy. That was a video I did a long time ago. I 
I don't think that would sell in Salem, Rachel. I really don't think that would sell. And that's the thing, like, uh, um, I was having a discussion with people in Burbank about the candle, and they're like, oh yeah, it's a Salem candle. I'm like, you don't know your history about Salem, do you? What else, what else we got here? So I showed you the gray stuff, Sam Pop Candle Company. I showed you Sally's, I showed you the Birkin hair. Werther and Gray, Instagram, right now, just do it, do it. Say, heard from you from the candle enthusiast. I'm not looking for free candles. I'll buy the candles. I don't care. I want to work with them. I want to make sure that I, they know that I'm on their side and that I'm, I'm in this for positivity. I'm supporting their passionate efforts. I'm supporting them as an artist is what I'm doing. But that label, that label, I don't think he makes it anymore. And I think it is a he. I don't think he makes it anymore. What else do we got? Did we go through all of the labels? Or the candles? Look at this. So I found this um, as I was driving around New England, a thrift store of some kind, and I'm saying to myself, it's kind of like a Yankee candle lamp, but it's way, way too big. And I lifted it up and it said, uh, it says made exclusively for Yankee Candle. And I'm like, whoa. So this obviously comes from a time, maybe not all of that long ago, but I've been collecting shades for a while. This definitely comes from a time where I wasn't collecting shades uh, because I don't, I, I just don't remember them ever being this big. And just as a comparison, I'll show you what I mean. I mean, this is what you, you see um, today, right? And this is how monstrous this thing is. Uh, and as much as I want to keep things like this, um, you know, this would look beautiful on my spiced pumpkin uh, all throughout November, but uh, I'm gonna put that up on eBay. 99 cents. 99 cents. Another way to support the candle enthusiast. Has anyone ever wanted to work for QVC or like the Home Shopping Network for just one day. I hate selling things. I hate being a salesperson. But just for one day, I would love to like work for QVC or like just put on that attitude like for a limited time offer, ex an exclusive extension. We're, we're, I, don't, I don't have the vocabulary down, but I would study. I would get it down and I would have so much fun being on QVC for one day. And I, I would, I would, oh man, I would go in with so much enthusiasm. You think you, you saw all my enthusiasm? You haven't even begun to see my enthusiasm. I would go in with so much gusto, like a whole, not not a cup of coffee, but like, like not even this, like a hodl, like a like a like a like a pump pot of coffee in my system. I'd go in there and I'd be selling hair dryers and all that stuff. Oh, that's a good point, Mark. It is porcelain. Yeah, so take a look inside there. So yeah, it just I was not an accessories person until I moved out to California. I I was really just straight up candles. Um So I'm not used I'm not used to that. How cool would that be? How cool would that be? QVC, welcome the candle enthusiast. Um, and it would be great too, because you know I'd make tons of mistakes, and I'd try to make points that wouldn't really work out in the end. Let me make sure the camera, give me one second, folks. Okay, okay, I just wanted to make sure the battery wasn't doing bad things. All right, what else do we got? We said sweet treats. We got sweet treats. Got sweet treats for days. I was all organized. So once again, real quick, anyone who missed it, 
and is waiting to hear about this giveaway thing. Uh, I'm going to be doing bigger, bigger giveaways. I mean, bigger in the sense that like full candles. Because the send, honestly, to send what's in this bag uh, is going to cost the same to send an entire candle overseas. And so it doesn't matter, right? Um, these are the, the four holiday 2017 U.S. Uh, uh, to, uh, Christmas uh, preview scents. We have the Cascading, a Snowberry, Aromatic Orange, and Evergreen, Spicy uh, Pepperberry and Spruce, and Balsam and Clove. All you have to do is go onto Instagram and post a photo of just something that you think and feel you feel represents Halloween in one little composition, right? It could be decorations in your house. It could be at the mall. It could be anything you want. Ha, ha, you know, go on Photoshop. Make something. To be creative. Do whatever you want. Uh, I'm going to pick my favorites, put it into a lottery system, and then pick one out of a bag, right? And then I'm gonna send you not only the four tarts, but the four votives, no matter where you are in the world. Just make sure when you post that on Instagram that you tag me or you at least use my handle in the description. So this way I'm notified that you're posting that photo. All right. So that's how that works. ABC, no QVC. Heck, I guess we could get you on ABC Network, too. That'd be fun. I'd have too much stage fright. You know what? I said that about this channel, too. All right. All right, we've been postponing this for a while. Uh, we're going to depart from the topic of candles for, for a moment, as we commonly do on this channel. And we're going to talk about Halloween trees. Now... I got some Jelly Bellies. Uh, I picked this one up uh, because of, you see Sweet Elsa here. This lighting is atrocious. We see Sweet Elsa here, frozen Jelly Bellies. One has to ask, what does uh, a frozen Elsa and Anna, and I guess Olaf, Jelly Belly taste like? That could take some time, so I'm gonna skip that. I'm sure they taste beautiful. On the back, it actually says sparkling grape soda, sparkling cream soda, sparkling blueberry, and sparkling berry blue. What do you want? What do you think, Elsa? You want some of that? You can't. You can't have that. You can't have that. But I think it's time. I think it's time. I mean, when when else would be a proper time, right? It's Halloween. I've got candy. I've been saying I've been doing this for a while. I'm gonna make sure these are the, okay, it's the same thing. One's in a bag, one's in a box. This is Bean Boozled, folks. You know, I'm sure you know what this is. I really didn't know what it is. Uh, there's some normal tasting uh, jelly bellies in here, like uh, buttered popcorn, um, juicy pear, tutti frutti, but it's gonna be mixed in with some some rancid flavors ones that you would not expect to be a part of you know the other the others uh we have spoiled milk dead fish rotten egg toothpaste barf i mean this is i feel silly saying these words canned dog food booger moldy cheese moldy cheese i mean that could be a wonderful thing moldy cheese Stinky socks. I would use stinky socks as a descriptor on Syrah, the wine, Syrah, all of the time. Tutti Frutti, lawn clippings. Lawn clippings, that's the one I found interesting. Lawn clippings, is that, is that bad? How is that disgusting? I wanna, I wanna try this lawn clippings. And then lime, so I don't know how to do this. I'm gonna try to do this as fast as I can. Oh, stinky socks on Syrah all the time. But your spelling is a little bit off there. Let me fix it. So there's that and 
Don't ever get these mixed up. It's the same grape, just uh, two different places in the world. Syrah is French. French. Shiraz is uh, typically Australian. All right. Yeah, toothpaste, I was thinking the same thing. That's not so negative. It's a bit overwhelming. The boys say, don't do it, Shan. I'm going to do it. Look, if I could spend the night in the Lizzie Borden house... You know, I told my good friend, I spent the night, the whole night by myself in the Lizzie Borden house. And he looks at me and goes, who's Lizzie Borden? <sighs> you know, you try to please some people. So they, they're not marked, obviously. So I don't know how to do this. I'm gonna spread it on the table. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna separate the greens because I wanna try this lawn clippings first. So it, the greens are rather going to be lime or lawn clippings. I'm hoping I get... That's lawn clippings. My God, that's delicious. It doesn't really taste like grass. It tastes like flowers. How is that a bad thing at all? Maybe it's not supposed to be a bad thing. Lawn clippings belongs in a box of Jelly Bellies, a normal box of Jelly Bellies. Wow. Is anybody with me here? No? All right. It's really, I, I want, I would buy a box. I don't really eat a lot of sugar, but I would snack on these. There's more of them here. I will eat them. Maybe. Now, Stinky Socks, that's next on the list. That should be easy to find. Now, remember, we do have something coming up from Knott's Scary Farm, or Knott's Berry Farm, uh, coming up at the end of this video, which will be approaching in about 20 minutes. So hang in tight for that. You're not going to want to miss this. All right, so I've separated the, separated the ones that could be this. One's going to be... See, I think they do this on purpose. Of course they do it on purpose because it's rather peach or barf. But they make them look identical. Here we go. Are we ready? Okay, that wasn't barf. That was dead fish. Oh my God. That is, I cannot believe they're selling this to kids. That's not, I mean, that that is dead fish with melted cheese on top of it. Parmesan cheese. I'm, I'm, I'm really trying to get the flavor out of this. I'm doing this just for you guys. Melted Parmesan cheese. It's not even like dead fish. It's just, it's just imagine like, like at the end of the day, the fishmonger cleaning up sweeping up all of the the debris off the floor that distinct fish bone thing all right i don't want another one of those how did that happen that was supposed to be barf hold on oh it's so cheesy it tastes like cheese I love cheese, but not on fish. That stuck to my teeth. Excuse me. I'm telling you, I don't get the kids of this generation. Are these for, are these for kids? Is there a warning? You know, no, no warning for kids? No, just eat dead fish, kids. Um, let's hope this is not the same thing. I don't have a spit bucket here. That's barf. I'm just... Oh, man. That's Pizza Hut on a really bad night. Pizza Hut. Pizza Hut. Breadsticks. 
I can taste the herbs. Oh. Um, I can safely say I've never gotten sick after eating Pizza Hut breadsticks or pizza. But if one were to, I would imagine it would taste very similar to this. It tastes like basil. Is that what we associate with barf? Basil? All right, I know this is taking a long time. I should have probably edited this video. I can see how this would be fun in college. I'm not in college. In fact, I'm by myself. Can I get a good one this time? <sighs> it's alright, it's alright. You know what? I've had worse. I've had worse. Alright, so the next one's gonna be coconut or spoiled milk. Now, um, spoiled milk is one of those things that I can just think about. Just think about and get kind of nauseous. And uh, so, this is gonna be tough. So, I got all the white ones right here. You can't see it. I'm not cheating. I got all the white ones right here. And what I'm going to do is one's going to be spoiled milk or it could be spoiled milk or it could be coconut. Oh god. This is not even fair. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. No. It doesn't taste like coconut, though. I think it was chewing on a piece that was stuck still to my teeth. If that's spoiled milk, it tastes like eggnog. That's not bad either. I mean, the initial attack was atrocious. But. It kind of tastes like eggnog now, without like any of the baking spices, without any of the booze. I could, I could dig this flavor. I can't even taste this one. Yeah, I mean it's not coconut. Boiled milk turns out to be not, not bad at all. All right. Okay, so this is the honest truth. I said spoiled milk gets me nauseous just thinking about it, but, but I mean this. Even with this one right here, Elsa on the floor, one thing I really have never been able to do is the, the canned dog food business. Just can't do it. I just can't do it. Um, it really does get me uh, very grossed out. So uh, I'm going for rather a canned dog food here or a chocolate pudding. Uh, I hope you folks are enjoying this. If you're watching it, let's give a thumbs up if you haven't already. Just for my effort alone, if you don't mind. If you don't mind. All right, here it comes. How many times in a row? Very low many. Water chestnut. Mmm. That tastes like, um, like if you went to the Chinese buffet and only picked the things that were brown and you put it in a bucket 
and you put that maybe in the fridge for a couple days, maybe a week, and retrieved it and ate some. I could see where the dog food comes in, but that's uh, that's just this is just not fun. All right, so the last one. No, we have two more. God, so many. All right, hold on. Let's do this quick. Got to pick this up. What time are we at here? Got 10 minutes. That's buttered popcorn. So butter, I think they might have skipped out on a couple here. This is rather buttered popcorn or moldy cheese. Oh no, caramel corn. This is caramel corn. I have no spit bucket. All right. Moldy cheese. Uh, I don't think I have, I don't think they've given me a rotten egg. You know what, I might be okay with that. But it's rather gonna be moldy cheese or a rotten egg. One of these four here. Moldy cheese is good. It tastes like blue cheese, but it also tastes like dust. Minus the dust, I dig this. I love blue cheese. All the way. I'm about that all the way. It's just a little too dusty. It really does taste like you licked like a, not that I have done this, but licked like a dusty table. Same thing. All right. So I think I got out of this safe, folks. I don't think they gave me, they didn't give me a rotten egg, but I tried everything else. So if you're interested, lawn, lawn clippings, I recommend. I'm serious, 100% conviction. Spoiled milk turned out to be like eggnog. I'm not a big eggnog person at all. I'm not really, I don't care for the milk. But um, I can I can eat it. What about the toothpaste? The canned dog food was atrociously bad. The moldy cheese minus the dust was actually not that bad. There's a booger one in here too. Toothpaste. I need the toothpaste. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with that. <sighs> yeah. Big cooling sensation. All right. All right. Not so bad. Not so bad. All right. So that was interesting. I'm glad we finally had a chance to do that. Um, let me explain how uh, this Knott's Berry, not Scary Farm thing is going to work. The booger one, I think my, my palate is really just shot, Cecily, so it's like, I honestly just, I really wasn't tasting, I knew it wasn't pear or whatever it's supposed to be. Yeah, Juicy Pear, but wasn't getting it at all. Uh, thumbs up if you barf. I'm not going to barf. I don't barf. Um, so, not a scary farm. Now, if you haven't been introduced to my sister-in-law, uh, Monica Carlson, she's, not, she's usually here all the time. Um, 
uh, she uh, is uh, uh, she joins my brother on his channel Eric Peter Carlson or the EPC family uh, on YouTube every Saturday morning for their live uh, Disney chat and um, they're, 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 they're the incredible chemistry. They're so funny. I, my brother is my best friend. And Monica is truly like, like a, I mean, really like a sister. Like we are oil and water, if that's a phrase. You know, we just, but we're still so, uh, uh, such good friends. But we always argue. We bicker like children. But they're at a very special place today. They're at Knott's Berry Farm and they're doing a live video they're gonna be walking around talking to all of the characters showing all of the many attractions at Knott's Berry Farm today they're gonna to be talking to Charlie Brown they're gonna be talking to Snoopy so what I would like for you guys to consider at uh, 3 30 which is coming up in about seven minutes if you have the time you can just like hop over the name of the channel is Eric with a K Eric with a K, Eric Peter Carlson, Carlson with a C. Um, he's my brother, she's my sister-in-law. They're hanging out at Knott's Berry Farm, about 10 minutes away, if that, from Disneyland. He has a Disney vlog, but today they're mixing up a little bit. And uh, they're still learning about the park themselves, so, and they're just entertaining to watch. That's what I'm gonna be doing as soon as we wrap things up. But until we get to 3.30, if you guys have any questions, uh, please throw them my way. Uh, Cecily, thank you for doing that. Yes. Eric Peter Carlson. Snoopy. Yeah, so like Disney's got the Disney characters, obviously, uh, but not Berry Farm, also in Anaheim. Um, they have um, the kind of the license, the rights for the Peanuts characters. So instead of meeting like Mickey Mouse and Minnie Mouse, you get to meet Linus and Lucy and Charlie Brown. And it's a whole bunch of fun. And uh, it's a completely different environment at Knott's Berry Farm if you've ever been there. You know, it's you know it's a little bit obviously quieter, but a little more quaint, a little bit more old fashioned at times. Um, completely different experience. So this time of year, obviously, Charlie Brown and Snoopy, it's the great pump. Charlie Brown. It's a big topic, so they have a lot of fun stuff happening uh, at what they call Knott's Scary Farm. You get it? Um, so you want to check that out. Is Elvira actually, she, so she's still performing there. But Jennifer, thank you. So it's Elvira's last year performing this year. I, I knew she performed there. I just didn't know she was still doing it. Yeah, her shows are amazing. I've never seen her live. I've met Elvira. I was completely like I didn't know what to say. I was taken off guard. Like, what do you say to Elvira? Like, hey, you know, um, I like your hair. I mean, you can't compliment her on anything because anything you compliment her on is going to be com completely inappropriate. Shane, the gift sets for Cookie Swap hit the store so you can talk about them. I can't wait. Yes, I know the exact moment they're going to be available for my hands to touch. So as soon as the Cookie Swap and uh, the other collection, did I tell you guys what they were? At this point, I think it's fair to say um, the, the Winter Wonderland collection is coming back. And there are some other surprises as well coming, not coming back, but going to be released. Uh, I have all the dates that they're going to be officially released, but I also have the dates a little bit, a few days in advance where I'm gonna be able to get my hands on them thanks to Yankee Candle Village. I love you guys. Uh, and talk about them um, before they're officially on the shelves. This way you guys will have a little bit of input before you make any purchases. Top secret cookie swap. Um, like I said, folks, as soon as I see something leak on the internet, 
uh, I'll let you let you know. All I can say is one is what can I what can I say? They're both they're, they're two fruit concepts. There are cookies, obviously, but they're two fruit concepts. Um, one's a tree fruit. One is a citrus fruit, and one has got the longest Yankee Candle name I've ever heard. Monica, Monica's here. So Monica, I'm just about to send. So Monica's M Monica's joining us. Uh, she's at, like I said, not Scary Farm or not Berry Farm. Uh, we want to send everybody along your way. See what you're up to. What have you guys been doing? Um, I was gonna have you guys say the candle enthusiast sent us. Might not have to do that anymore. Um, you know what? Why don't you do it now? Um, uh, Monica, you guys ready? Don't go yet. Don't go yet. Don't go yet. This is so cool. I feel like we're like running like a network channel here. Monica, you good? You guys good to go? Promise me. Remind them. If they don't, if they don't hear me right now, ask them. One thing I want is if... Monica, if we were going to have a candle called Monica, and if we were going to have a candle called Eric, what would those two candles smell like? I want you to ask them. Ask, make sure they answer those questions. A Monica candle and an Eric candle. Monica, come on. Come on. And before you leave, I just ate a barf jelly bean. Thumbs up. Even if you hated the video. Thumbs up. All right, so guys, go ahead. Eric Peter Carlson uh, uh, on YouTube. Let me give you the, 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 the link. Uh, it's not going to be it, but you know what I'm saying. Go there. I'll get the real link up in a couple seconds. Uh, but go there, s tell them I sent you, tell them I said hello, and make sure they, they answer that question. What does an Eric Peter Carlson candle smell like, and what does a Monica Carlson candle smell like? Uh, YouTube.com, Eric Peter Carlson, bam, the real link is right here. And I'll post it. So thank you all for joining. Um, uh, please remember to participate in that giveaway. Um, it is. Uh, I would love to send these out to anywhere uh, in the world. Keep your eyes open for reviews on Burke and Hair. Keep your eyes open for uh, the Sally's Collection, Scent Pop Candle Company. That's it for me today, folks. Enjoy your time at uh, Not Scary Farm. If uh, you have a little extra time on this Sunday uh, morning, evening, afternoon, where, whatever time it is for you. Thanks for joining. Love you guys. I'll see you real soon. Bye-bye now.